Yo, 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 we live on location. We in Miami right now. This is a special live on location tap-in, man. We never had a tap-in with a special guest, man. We got an all-time NBA great in this great joint. You hear me? Joke. Before we get into the tap-in and talk about the, the, the season to be and the way too early predictions, man, we got to give a little kudos to my mans here. Yeah. Going mm. into the ring of honor with the Let's Suns. Go. We got Amari Stoudemire. Yes, sir. Yes, that. about to be deemed with a prestigious award and it's kind of like getting your jersey retired slash hall of fame or, or their version of it how do you feel about uh getting that illustrious you know uh reward of your season and your career playing for the suns going into the ring of honor yeah man i mean it's it's definitely you know very appreciative you know what i'm saying like being a high school player going straight to the league yeah yeah and you know you see what yeah, I'm saying? yeah 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 and then and then being able being able to to take that through a career that ends up with the with the jersey retirement, you know what I'm saying? That's like a, that's a special moment. Have they have they gave you a date yet? Or uh, what date? Yeah, March second. March second. So they want to do gotta three be in two. That joint. You know what I'm saying? The third month, second day. Okay. Yeah. So that's how they want to handle. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's um, super dope. What are some of the memories of the history of the game that you remember, guys? Getting a couple of players that you remember getting their jersey retired and. Uh, Ceremony and they whole family sitting in the middle of the court. Who's some of the memories that you remember seeing over your career? I mean, the one that stands out the most is when Mike got his jersey retired mm -hmm. in Chicago. Yeah, he had his family with him, his children and wife with him at the time, and watching the whole ceremony on how everyone was just like giving him the praise that he deserved from his illustrious career. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like watching that was wasn't was was good to watch. Even the past few years watching. Timmy get his retired, mm -hmm. Spurs basically those guys yeah. getting their jersey retired, watching them. That was always good to see. How was it, uh, did it blindside you or I was talking up to it or did it was just a blindside call that was just like, hey man, we gonna, we gonna retire your jersey this year and how was your reaction to it when they called? It was a blindsided call. Oh, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, was my, it was my son's birthday. Oh, yeah. So I was like, I was out walking the dog actually and about to get ready to plan something for him for dinner that night. And I got a call from from Matt. He's like, "Yeah, I got something to tell you." I'm like, All right, well, you know. He's talking about Matt Ishby, the Ishby, new owner. Ishby, the owner, mm -hmm. the new owner. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's like, um, "We're gonna retire your jersey." I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then he was like, uh, just explaining how it's gonna work. And then um, shortly after that, I got texts from like all the. You know, front office people mm -hmm. with the congratulations and all these things, and they're like, "We're gonna make an announcement within the next few hours." Um, so it was like a a great day for me because it's my son's birthday. Yeah, it was also my namesake, right. and then my name's being retired into the Ring of Honor. It was all like a like a um like a good moment for me. So it was cool. Yeah, it's about that time, man. Yes, sir. Like you definitely is a great, and you definitely one of the greats out of Phoenix history, man. So congrats, bro. Appreciate yeah, it. Man. Super salute on that, man. Let's get let's get into these storylines of the season, man. First of all, since we talking about Phoenix and you being in the ring on, let's stay right there. Yep. And they made some huge, huge moves this summer. And yep. you know, they walk into the season. KD and Book is back. CP is now in Golden State. Mm -hmm. And you got Bradley Beal, a new number three in the building with them. And they just made a couple extra moves on the tail end of, of all of those other moves those have. And they brought in- um, Nukic. Yeah, okay. big Nurkic. They oh, got, yeah, they got yeah, his, yeah, yeah, Aiden yeah, yeah. Aiden's gone, and Aiden's now they gone. got Nurkic at center. So what do you right. see with the Suns, the new look Suns, and, and what they trying to accomplish this year? I like what's going on. Book the last man standing with that finals team. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? They made a lot of changes. Brought in KD, Bradley Bill. When you bring in, when you bring in KD, you know right off the top they're going to be a contender yeah. for, to win yeah. a championship. Then you're going to bring in Bradley Bill. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They kind of help with Book and KD. And then you go and make the trade with Aiden and bring in Norkic and you got you got a few other pieces you brought in. Grayson Allen, some shooters, you got shooters around your core players. So that that's gonna give you the formula right there that needs to be successful. Cause you got your offensive talent with Book, KD, and Bradley. Mm -hmm. But then when they get double teamed or trapped or whatever, you gotta have shooters. shooters. Yeah. I felt it was important for them to, to make that move and get Nurkic for Aiden for whatever reason. I didn't feel like that he he 
he needed a fresh start from there because I felt like yeah. from from the, the last couple seasons, the you know he came back the one se- last season and hadn't talked to Monty or anybody the whole year, right. and it was clearly some type of disconnect. there. you know how it is, man. We get to a new team. I hope that he has a you know a hell of a new fresh start for Portland, and you know he doesn't have any of that energy stuck around. You know how sometimes it'd be just as simple as us just moving to a new place sure. and getting a fresh start and feeling better about ourselves, and we start hooping. Absolutely, but I think they needed that in Phoenix. He needed to go, and they needed him to go because it wasn't working for whatever reason. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. And I think I think you know Aiden probably wasn't as aggressive on the inside that the guys wanted him to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like. When you seven foot in the paint, you gotta dunk. You gotta dominate. You, you gotta you gotta dominate, champ. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you got you gotta bring it every Number single one night. Pick, yeah. you know? Top pick in the draft, and you got a chance to win a championship. And you got all the tools. When we look at you, your game, you you got everything. That you gotta to bring be it. Had. You gotta bring it. And so I think I think the chemistry there didn't work out for them in Phoenix. But now you're right. Going to Portland, that should kind of rejuvenate them and get them going. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you this on the Phoenix side, like. Uh, you have KD, you got Book, you got Bradley. Do you think they should pursue a starting point guard or just be cool with the backup point guard and, and go with the three big big guards? Yeah, I mean, I'm always an advocate of having a point guard, mm-hmm. right? Because you can control the game. You can get guys those shots when they need them. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can control the floor of the game. You know what I'm saying? The team ain't going a, a three, a three, on a three-score run. You can stop that by getting KD the ball in this spot. Yeah. So having a point guard, it don't have to be a luxurious, you know, Hall of Fame point guard. Yep. Yeah. Just solid. Just somebody solid who control the game and the pace of the game will be helpful so you can get those guys to rock when they need it. Dame Dollar, the trade that we knew was eventually mm-hmm. coming, but we had no damn clue that the Milwaukee Bucks was gonna yeah. sneak through the back door. Yeah. And 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 do everything to satisfy Big Giannis in one swoop. Like how? Like that all caught everybody off guard. But what do we think? How do they look now? You know, Drew Holiday is gone. He's in Boston, but mm-hmm. they they got Dame. They still got Middleton. They still got mm-hmm. Portis. They obviously got Giannis. They still got Lopez, Crowder. Mm-hmm. They right. look like what could be a potential champion. Yeah, what you I, think? I think they was always a champion. Cause- Contender without Dame, but mm-hmm. uh, just losing Grayson Allen, losing uh, Drew Holiday, and you add Dame to that, it's gonna be smoke in the city. No question. When, <laughs> when you when you put that together, and I feel like he's the perfect, the perfect punch for them. He's the perfect punch for Giannis. I feel like he's gonna elevate his game even more because a lot of stuff that Giannis had to do, Dame is gonna take pressure off of him. And when Giannis is you know, like Amari giving you 47 minutes to just kill every time you got his closer in. You know, right. the last no two doubt. minutes, no I can get, it's Dame time, and you can let him finish the game off for you. So I think it's perfect for them. Yeah, Giannis got that mentality too, bro. Like, what I like about him is he got, he got that competitive spirit. You understand me? Like, he ain't, <laughs> don't turn he ain't off. playing no games. He's like, I ain't working out with no players in the offseason. <laughs> right. I ain't trying to shake their hands. I ain't trying to be friends with yeah. them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then on the court, you want to you want to attack everybody. Like you want you want to bring your A game and show your dominance. Yeah, and that's that mentality you gotta have when you're trying to win a championship and you're trying to be the best. And then you got Dame, who's a finesse, silent assassin. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be a, a force to be reckoned with. Cause he's the perfect piece for them. Like you know what I'm saying? Like like you just said, Giannis can dominate you the entire game, whole game, just just in the end kill you. And then it's right. like now they bring in if not the most elite closer, one of. He's yeah. a top two, three guy as far as like closing and hitting big shots and, and doing that type, that's Dame time. That's what he no does. Question. So like, mm-hmm. as much as Dame, you know, had his hopes set on Miami, when that call came through, he had to turn around like, like yeah, hey, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, damn, yeah. I mean, this is like. You can't turn that one down. Yeah, you can't, not you, big Greek freak standing there, the dominant thing, dude, that he is in his prime, and you got this much and time team, to go with him, right. and a supporting cast. Right. You, yeah, listen, exactly. you get the lotto with that one. I think it's a special thing when you have already two good players in Milton and, and Giannis, and then you bring a, Another player in that can lighten the load. Top seventy five, top seventy five all time. Right. And, and like, the personality that's, that's though, the personality player. is key. He's you right. know he's a he's a good teammate type no guy. Doubt. He's not he's a like guy Giannis. that's gonna come no up like and, come right. in and disrupt and do that. So it just it fits all the way around to me. Yeah. Now on yep. the other side of that, Miami. Mm-hmm. Dame wanted to go there. He. 
came out publicly and said he wanted to go there. What do you think? Was it Miami didn't do enough, or was it Portland just was like, I don't give a damn, he ain't going there at the end of the day regardless? I don't think Miami had enough assets to give to Portland. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure they wanted Bam and right. a few other players, and Miami like, nah, we can't give up Bam, we can't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because that's one of their core guys. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think Miami had enough assets to give over to Portland. So then that's why that didn't work out. I'm sure Portland would have tried to please Dame on and send him where he wants to go because he's been a loyal player yeah. for them and you know what I'm saying, like all these years. But I don't think Miami had enough. And yeah, yeah I, feel, I feel like now though with, with Milwaukee, it's a good spot for him. I just feel like this situation, it was just like Miami lost it. The strategy that they used to get him and all this stuff just didn't work out. And it kind of rubbed Portland the wrong way where I feel like Portland on purposely like, yeah, we gonna X you out. He gonna right. have to go somewhere else. Allegedly, there's rumors that uh, that that after that deal, Miami tried to get in on the Drew Holiday and mm. held to the no on that too. And okay, he to Boston. You see <laughs> right, what I'm saying? Right, right. So it could, it could, it could be something going on, but I don't know. I mean, I just I just don't have enough information to know on that. But yeah. You know, either way it go, I think Portland turned out with a good situation. Yes, they did. They the got players it. they brought in. Yeah, I did. I felt and then that Milwaukee too. set with, with with what they got, and then Boston also bringing in Drew. I think that's a good look. Yes, let's move right on to that. Talk about Drew Holiday going to Boston now. How did you like? I know for me, me and D talked about this when it first happened, and I was kind of not. I mean, first of all, this make no mistake, you need the Drew Holiday, especially after losing Marcus Smart. I, right. I agree with that, you absolutely need him. But my question about giving up Robert Williams was, I don't know, did they have somebody who gives them what he presented? Yeah, now, I don't, I don't, there's I don't a caveat think so. that he gets, he's hurt a lot <laughs> and he misses a lot of games, I heard that. But yeah, like, but so does Prazingis. That you see was, what I'm saying? That was my saying? exact thing. Like, if, if unless they telling me that the, the KP, because I've got zero problems with him when he's healthy. He's right. A, he's a he's amazing. Sure. So, but Six unless God. he's gonna be there at least sixty plus games, then this you, I don't understand what happened there. KP, when he's healthy, is a great asset to have on the team. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But to give up the time, Lord, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like. That's a that's a heavy lift. Yeah, yeah. that's that's hard for me to. That's he I mean, presents something at that rim for them. That, yeah, yeah at you see what I'm saying? Rim, yeah. Aggressiveness, yeah. rebounding, yeah. tenacity. Mm -hmm. He brings all that to the table. Yeah. KP gonna be out with the finesse, the shooting the threes, the euro step, Is and he all this. Takes the basket. Right. You see what I'm saying? We need somebody to protect the basket. But I guess they feel like their perimeter guys should be able to lock down the wing with Tatum, Brown, Holiday. They should be able to lock down. But that inside presence, people fail to realize how important that is. The three untouchables was was Brown, Tatum, and I felt like Robert Williams was the other untouchable. I love Drew Holiday going there. I feel like it's the perfect fit for him, but at the cost of giving up Robert Williams. That's tough. That was a tough decision for me. I think it really gonna take a, I gotta really see it, but it might take a, a little notch away from they deep, them defensively. Yeah. I feel like the reason they've been holding down Embiid in them playoffs and all that, because they had a player like Robin Williams that can focus on Embiid and protect no the basket even and more. And I still like Horford, you know, Horford, the, the, the trusty vet, he gonna be yeah. solid, come in and give them what they need. And, right. Uh, I, I would assume they they bring Blake back because Blake played well for them. It was a good you know vet for him. You know what I'm saying as yeah. far as that. But um, we gonna see. We gonna see what Boston got. Well, let's go back out west, man, to the to the to the Lake Show. Mm -hmm. that, I want to get y'all take because because Anthony Davis was was I was watching his interview. He's saying he want to play 82 games and mm -hmm. this and that. Like, what's y'all take on? What AD needs to be for the Lakers to have the success that they that they want to have is like far as being a championship team and winning it all. What does AD need to be? I mean, he got to be almost a first team All NBA guy. You know what I'm saying? Like you got you got a first or second team at least. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to you got to bring your A game because LeBron, LeBron gonna do his part. He, he, he already, he already dedicated the season to his son. Yeah, he, I saw so you that know what too. that means. That yeah. means it's business. It's, it's business it's, time. Business for yeah. real. You know what I'm saying? And so now AD got to back it up too. AD, I see him in the gym, weight training, getting his body right, getting stronger, which is all important. But that has to be maintained throughout this throughout the season. You can't just be in the summer. You can't just be a, a weight training regiment in the summertime. Keep that going all the way through the season. 
So when the postseason come along, you're in top shape. You feel what I'm saying? Body's still strong. Your body's still strong. You're taking care of yourself. Now, if he does that and he play the way we know AD can play, Lakers going to be a problem. I'm waiting on that, that MVP year. He don't have to win the MVP, but being in the race, being the second or the third person in the no MVP he, votes, I'm waiting on that year for him. And I hope it was. I hope it is this year because I feel like it's time for LeBron to officially – hand that torch to number two and, and be a number two now and, 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 and turn on over. But I'm just looking for AD to have that MVP year, and I hope he do play 82 games. I mean, it's, it's, it's really about efficiency, Yeah. right? In, in order to prolong your career and have a long season of playing 82 games, you gotta be efficient. Your balance gotta be there on your shots. Your footwork gotta be intact. Mm -hmm. Your strength gotta be there. Your core gotta be tight. Like all those little details, mm -hmm will prolong your season, you know what I'm saying? So when you're doing your weight training and all these things, and if you focus on each individual training regimen, then that's gonna help you in the games. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. just being realistic. I don't need, nor do I expect AD to play 82 games. Mm -hmm. right. But I do need you to be out there at least 70 to 72 and like as much as you can. Just, just you know what I'm saying? Max out. Do everything you can to prepare, to put yourself in the best case scenario. Now, wherever those chips fall, we deal with them. Like you land on somebody's foot row, you can't do nothing about that. Right. Weight training, nothing, don't do nothing for that. Sure. But like, we all understand that. But like, other stuff, your body just breaking down and you didn't even really do nothing like that. You could have tried to do something about that. He posed to be in the list, man. You starting to see all these big men getting named, the Jokers, right. the MB, and nobody is naming AD and they all us know that his skill level is is Deserving of that, yeah. So I just want it to match everything. Yeah, I hear that. I feel like the Lakers overall as a team though, what they did this summer, they created a deep team. I feel like they got 11 players that really can get on the court and, and hoop and ball. I love what they did this summer. I love how they put it together, but you know, I hope D'Lo is turned to a, a score instead of worrying about playing the point guard because yeah. it's hard to play a point guard on a team with LeBron. LeBron is the point guard, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. What do we feel about the, the situation that's going on right now in Philly with James Harden, the front office? How do you see that playing out for him? It's messy, man. You know, any any time you're conducting business, it's never smart to go public and have an announcement about somebody in public. I agree, because it yeah. makes it harder to deal with. And now it's harder to deal with. Now you got all these opinions out here in the world chiming in, and it makes it just hard to come up with an agreement with whoever you're in business with. You know what I'm saying? So that was the first mistake. Now it's already messy. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like dating a girl who just can't stop talk running them out. <laughs> yeah. right. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, I, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I got this guy. I gotta let this go. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, you know like say everybody got an opinion now. So everybody got an opinion. So now it's like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. It's just a messy situation, man. It's, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough to figure that part out. With James, I'm big on energy. You know, y'all trying to win a championship, and your your whole season, every season now, when you got an MVP, is like championship or bust. Right. So you taking the long chance by not getting rid of him and bringing him in the locker room with that energy, and it's starting the season off. Right, like that. It, it's hard That's to start a, a seed deal, life man. like that when y'all need to bond and be brothers right. to go as far as you need to go. No so question. It's it's scary these days when you have guys asking for trades or you have guys in they feeling but about that. And I don't knock the guys all the time because you know we're like I say a double edged sword lead. A guy they won't even call you until you trade it. Right. They That's won't true even now. call you That's until real. you wait. That's true. Like, so it's a double-edged sword with, so I'm not on all the players, but that energy is key. Do y'all right. feel that he's getting into that weird situation kind of like where Melo was in toward the end? Do you think that could be James Harden at some point? Like where yeah, he's he, sitting here, he's looking for a team to be on and 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 that's not happening for whatever reason. He kind of running out of all his good cards. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. And it's, it, and it's getting to a point where it's, this is what you got to deal with. So I think it's, he, he pushing it a little bit. This can be where you just get left. You know how this NBA is. It can be the smallest thing, and that can be the label that you have on your name for the rest of your career. Right. Where every team you go to, the first question they ask is, so yeah, so what's up with that stuff that happened in so-and-so? <laughs> is you cool now? I do think it can be salvageable. Nah, I think so too. I'm just saying, what I'm that's saying? what I'm saying. I'm saying it's, it's just scary when you see, because I never thought what happened to Melo could happen. Like yeah. I was like, what? Like 
still got game right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. When I say salvageable, I think the best way to go about it at this point for James is to have a conversation with Dal Morey and really express how he feels and what the situation entails. And they have that conversation. And then be able to make an, you know, address that to the media in a sense. Because he's the one that came out in the media and said this guy's a liar and all these things and called the man out of his name. This man has a family, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but if you if you come out and then also say, hey, Darren Moore and I had a conversation. We are working this thing out, you know, for the better of the team and leave it at that. Meet now they can go behind the scenes and meet with your work. teammates and say, hey guys, I'm back. I'm on, I'm in full, full, full throttle. No, no stepping out of the situation. I'm all in. And then they can now become a cohesive team. Hey, when you but feel, it don't sound like Harden's there. Hey, I don't know if he's like there. You feel like you owe money. You be like, hey, I don't want to hear all that stuff. I just want my money. <laughs> right, but if you don't like get it, don't get it from that. this squad, who gonna pay him with the next squad gotta, with all this going on? You gotta get put it uh, on yeah, display yeah. to show that he worth what he wants. You played with a team that had two superstars, possibly Hall of Famers. All three of y'all played together. You coached on the team that brought three superstars, possibly Hall of Famers. You see all these teams getting together, the, the Giannis and um, Middleton and, and um, Lillard, uh, Jason Tatum over here, Phoenix, Golden State, got CP over there, not trying to work it out. What are some of the things that you remember when you played together to get the camaraderie and get it right, and some of the things when you seen it was coaching, that it was like, man, if we would did this more and kind of came together more, how would it go? And what advice would you give these teams that's trying to put something like that together? Well, I think as a player, you know, when you have when you have your core group or you have your franchise, your cornerstone guy, you try to build around that player. So when I was in Phoenix, I was that guy. We went and brought Steve to Phoenix. Sean was there. Sean was already there. Sean was already an All Star before I got there. Mm -hmm. He was already putting up numbers. So you know, and then I got drafted to Phoenix, and then Joe Johnson was already there. Mm -hmm. So we had a nice little core of guys. And then we went and brought Steve in to kind of add to that, right? So our team was built organically. Mm -hmm. um, but now we have players that's trying to join other teams. I can see how like CP for an example, he's you know later in his career, he want to be on a contending team. I understand that. When you're in your prime, I'm really not trying to join somebody else's team that's competing against me. Mm -hmm. I got to do what I got to do in the gym to beat you, yeah. you, know, you see what I'm saying? That's like me and my prime leaving Phoenix and going to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. right. Like that's not happening. <laughs> right. you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But from a coaching standpoint, when when I was part of the coaching staff in Brooklyn, we had James, we had Kyrie, and we had KD. Kyrie and KD was already there, right? So. We're like, well, as a coach, we're like, we're gonna want to try to build the best team possible in order to win a championship. Mm -hmm. So we're all for bringing in the next superstar player, but it's a matter of now cohesively getting all those minds to be on one page, right? And so that takes a lot of, you know, cultivating. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to talk to you have to talk to each player, you have to bring them in together, figure out what's the objective, how everyone feel about this, about this defensive strategy, how you feel about that how you feel about the offensive game plan, and then once they all feel comfortable in that space, then you can work it out. But if you have players who are not trying to listen, I want the ball more, yeah. and you're like, wait, you want the ball more? I'm the leading scorer. If you have all that going mm -hmm. on, then it's gonna be a mess. How important is the off the court like relationships? Cause like I know, I remember when I was with the Clippers, we used to be together all the time. Right. And I remember when I was talking to Q when he was in Phoenix, Y'all was together all the time, right. right? Having events at each other's house, doing stuff right. on the road with each other, eating. How is it important the chemistry off the court instead of just separating, going to your families, and I see you at practice? Off the court camaraderie is just as important as on the court. Mm -hmm. almost, it's almost 50 50. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like in Phoenix, we always hung out, whether it's, whether it's dinner, whether we're together at somebody's house, yeah. hanging out with the family and the kids, getting to know the children. Mm -hmm. Like that family environment allows you to have, you know, conversation on the court. Like, hey, you, you missed this assignment. You let your man drive baseline, sit in the middle. Yeah. He's not taking that as a negative like you approach. Like him like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, all right, I got you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that that off the court chemistry 
allow you to hold your teammates accountable without them getting offensive yeah. because you're saying they made a mistake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how important it is. How do we view Memphis now? I mean, they had a lot of momentum. I feel like it's 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 kind of slowed down, especially with, you know, job about to be in not injured, but uh suspended for twenty five games for all of that stuff that went on. But they got D. Rose there as a, you know, brought him in as a free agent. Um, Dylan Brooks is gone. What do we see? What do we see Memphis doing this year? I kind of don't understand. I I know Jai's out 25 games, but you got Jai, you got D. Rose, you got Marcus Smart, and you got Bang. And it's like all of them are like the same height. They like the same build. Right, they don't right, all do right, the same right, thing. And right. it's like it's four of them. Like, how, who going to be the eye man out? You just gave Bane a hundred and, and what? A hundred and something. Yeah, you, you cashed I mean, him out. a two man, so he, he like, you know, that's, out, that's, that's, you know, he a two yeah, man. He but, ain't really in that point guard fray. Still, yeah. but he's, he's part of that rotation. It's just them guys, is, like similarities is a lot closer than we, we think. And yeah, somebody going to get smart. the eyeball out the middle, you know? Mm -hmm. Bang got in his favor. He, he's the, he, I think he's the, out of that group of names you just named, he's the best scorer. He's the best scorer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think he's better scorer than, than Ja? I don't know. I, not, not, I mean, I, ja, first of all, Ja ain't even in this conversation because when he come back, that's he all in. Yeah, games. He's, yeah he, but even when he get there, it's not really a question of like, is Ja gonna play? Like, you fucking right. He's right back in, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Ja so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, when you talk about, I wouldn't really mean comparing him to that, to, to Ja, I'm talking about the rest of them. When you talk about Smart, you know, uh, whoever else, even D Rose, mm -hmm. Bane is a he's a he's he averaged like over twenty last year. Yeah, didn't he, he? yeah. He got busy. He yeah, got busy. he's a, yeah. he getting buckets. So mm -hmm. you know, he he separates himself from that that kind of conversation. Like I'm the best bucket getter right here. Yeah, Memphis well coached, right? They got they got a good coach, and so I expect for them to win a lot of games from a coaching strategy standpoint. But like you were saying, D Miles, they they small up front. Yeah. And you playing against you you're in the West. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if they're gonna be a top five team in the West. I don't see that. I see them yeah. on the on the bottom half of that. Yeah. They done went down. So and then they losing job for 25 games. The one thing I I, I wanna see out of them, because I'm a big fan. I like I like Jaron Jackson Jr. And yeah. I think he's a I think he's a stud. He the only my only, only, only complaint is he has to play without fouling. Yeah, and he's a big, he can space. He be leading the league in blocks. He beating shit up at the rim. And you know what I'm saying? And well, then offensively, the he could do either hand. He he got the whole package. I just need him to figure out how to not foul. Right, and that's the key. When you're a shot blocker, you always thinking about blocking the shot. Mm -hmm. And it takes a level of maturity to know, like, okay, be patient. When I can block it, how to be patient. How to you know be zone. Get right. Out you know what I'm saying? Up. Like you have to maturity will help kind of get that all figured out. He come off a, a amazing run, a historic run in the in the uh, in the playoffs last year, and get all the way to the finals and lose. But they didn't add nothing, and they lost a lot. They lost a lot. They lost a lot. They lost a lot. They did not bring in anyone else that's going to help them take another step. To take another step. So I, I, you know, failure is, a, is is a tough word, but I think they got a good coaching staff. And what, I, what I'm saying is development-wise. <laughs> you know it. You, you know what I'm saying? pull a rabbit out their head like, who is right. this one? Like, so always that, one yeah. or two. Right. <laughs> you know? right. So the players they have now, they're going to develop into being something that we haven't seen from them before. Mm -hmm. So they st they'll still be a top team or a team to focus on, but they did not bring in anybody else. They did not improve from a roster standpoint as far as free agency. You worked out with Dream. Yeah. What do you think Giannis – can take away from him going, we saw over the summer that he spent time and worked with Hakeem to drink. What do you think he can take away from that and learn and bring to his game? Yeah, I mean, when I was in New York, um, Coach Mike Woodson wanted me to play the five and develop more of a back to the basket game. And him and Dream was good friends. Mm -hmm. So he's like, Stat, I want you to go down and work out with Dream, you know, for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, yeah, cool, that's cool, no problem with that. I was already training heavy that summer anyways. And so I flew into Houston and start training with them. And a lot, a, lot of, a lot of things I learned was very helpful. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I, I learned certain ways to, to attack the post, certain angles to, 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 to look at when I'm on the post, how to attack, when to attack, what kind of footwork is needed for certain moves. So all that was helpful. And I took all that knowledge back to New York and I still worked on all that even in practice, before practice or after practice. 
to kind of master it. So I think Giannis, it will help him also in his post game. Right. And I don't know if we saw that a lot from Giannis in the past few if years. If he get the post game, it's gonna be curtains. It's, it, because yeah. that the one thing that they do, like everybody talk about, they wall up against him and don't let him get his full head of steam. If he gets a post up, it's over. It's because over. now I don't need that. I can just turn and drop, drop, drop. Go Giannis. to the block. Like you could drop when you could <laughs> right. drop somebody. It's over. Right. It's <laughs> over. Like that's like think about it. That's what Paul Pierce, the, yeah. the Kobe's. They just wherever they drop it, give it to him. Like if he develop a like some get some little mellow shit going. Like man, listen. Yeah, no doubt. Back to the basket moves, footwork, jump hook left right, swing throughs, yeah. up and under moves, yeah. all that. Read the double team when it comes. Yeah. And you're kicking the ball out to shooters. Exactly. Yeah. So like you can't double team too much down there. At At all. Game, middle team. Right. Yeah. Young is stronger than everybody in the post. So he can get he can establish his position easily. Yep. So and then if you just take that knowledge that Hakeem's giving him, that's gonna be that's gonna be an added bonus for his game. Do you think C P and, and Steph Curry can start the game together? I don't think so. I don't? don't? Think, I mean, well well, maybe. Right, because CP is a floor general, right? So Steph is a guy that's gonna come off screens so CP can get everybody the ball. Yeah. It's a matter of, can he start with Draymond? Yeah. Cause Draymond, Draymond's he also- the one that's doing he's it. The, he's the guy that does that. Yeah. But if Draymond, I think last year, Draymond started coming off the bench. That's not happening. So yeah. that so that may not happen. I'm not, I'm not sure what the dynamics are, but yeah. you know, CP could be a Draymond when he's not on the court. Steve Curl find a way to make that work, man. I don't. I, they started Clay, Steph, and Poole together once upon a time, so I don't see yeah. why CP wouldn't be able to start. And even if he didn't start, I still see him being able to be one of the first guys off the bench. And now, not even coming in for Steph, Steph for whoever. Now Steph becomes Ray Allen, Reggie Miller. Sure, take absolutely. the ball out of his hand, and you got the point guard CP right. who gonna always know how to get the ball to whoever need to get it. Absolutely. But imagine that now. You sub CP in, and you got him at the point, and you got Clay. You basically got Ray Allen and Reggie Miller. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Clay and Steph running around, coming off screen. Oh, yeah. And CP going like, to put the ball on the dime. And you got CP just, just picking this. it apart. Still right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm saying know. this, but what if you you have a starting lineup of you got Book, you got K, you got Book, KD, and Bill running your one, two, three. How Steph and, and CP going to play? How they gonna guard? How they like? Well, they gonna um, well, the defensively is gonna be a, a difficult task, right? Because you know you put them in the post. Yeah, like how they gonna guard? Like that's what I'm saying. Having them two on that's the floor. That's a good point. And CP is not the same guard that he was playing defense. You that's know? the same thing right. we could add. Like Steph and Poole aren't elite defenders, and they started and played heavy minutes throughout a championship run yeah, together. But they, and it seemed like they was playing a lot together, when, especially once Steph came back. No, they did. After, well, it didn't feel like they was playing a they whole did. lot of minutes together. It felt like he was, I'm subbing for you for Clay or I'm subbing you for Steph. Either one come out, I'm sub you my first sub. Yeah, you gotta think too, Steve Kerr gonna figure out a defensive strategy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like they try to set pick and rolls and they try to switch, then they can triple switch. Mm -hmm. Right, push, push CP back out, Draymond take the roller. Yep. They'll work on different strategies to figure out how they can compensate the defensive side. You was a long time teammate of Melo. He he just recently retired. We was in um, Puerto Rico with the Jordan brand, celebrated his retirement this, that, and third. Crazy, unbelievable, top 75 career. In your mind, where should his jersey be retired? Mm. Where should it hit the rafters? I mean, I only think it's only clearly between Denver and New York, but should it be both? Should it be one or the other? Or how you see That's it? That's a good question. Cause he had he had almost an identical career in both places. Yeah, and yeah. he was he was yeah, he was the face of Denver for the whole time he was there. Then he yeah. took it to New York and did the same thing. I'm not yeah. mad at both. Yeah. Um playoff success almost the same. I think he went to the Western Finals though in Denver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um that's a good question. Because he had a lot of he had a lot of a lot of success in both places. Mm -hmm. I know Denver is where it all started. Exactly. But New York is also where he he had a he had a, a, a great run there also. That's why it's you know to me it's hard to say which. I'm not mad at both teams doing. I I'm, I feel like he deserves it. Yeah, he's top he's top seventy five talent, one of the greatest offensive players I ever seen. Period. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't I mean 
Melo, Melo will score 50 points all jumpers. Come on now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All in triple threat. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> dynamic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he definitely got to get respected in, those, in, in, in both cities possible. Mm-hmm. I think so too. What you think, Black? I think both. I think both of them need to get him. Even though he's he wore number 15 like Joker, I think that still should be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Think, that's going to be a problem right there. I think right both there. of them Some, should get retired at 15. They both. Well, he played number six. He played with seven in New York. Yeah, he played yeah, seven. Seven going up in New yeah, York. That's not 15, even 15 in Denver with Joker with Joker down there. I don't know. <laughs> that's, just, that's crazy. I, that's I, I ain't thinking about that. Yeah, so I, I feel like they both should. Well, should I mean, Denver do. probably not thinking about retiring his jersey anyways if they gave Joker 15. Well, that was initially, but you know, yeah. now it's a lot of, a lot I mean, of years even, later. Even when I, don't I even think when they I, think, think Joker even in Phoenix, be nobody that. wore 32 when I left. I mean, they had, they had. Uh, the Shaq were? Shaq had 32. Shaq had 32. Yeah. Shaq had 32. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's a tough one. That's a <laughs> tough one with Joker with 15. We lost in the World Cup this year. Do you feel like it's time for us to go ahead and, and load up and bring one of them redeemed teams or them dream teams and put our best foot forward next summer? Shit, it sounds like it not already Olympics. happened. Yeah, it's time. starting to commit. KD, LeBron, Steph on the commit. They didn't commit it already. Oh, they have? Yeah, it's they time. They already didn't commit. Oh, it's, 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 it's already time. begun. It's <laughs> no the doubt. Avengers have started to so, assemble. So if you had to pick a starting lineup out of the guys that you feel that should go and they should be the starter, who would be the five that be starting? The five to start? Yeah, if you had to pick out the NBA, the five Americans you gonna send over there to start the Olympics, who would it be? Starting five, Steph at the point, Book at the two, KD, LeBron, and at the five slot, at the five slot, it's a question mark, right? Cause I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Who's the best? Who's the best like American five? AD, AD. Mm-hmm. Him and Bam probably. And I will probably go with AD at the five in that case. Who gonna win MVP this year? Mm. This gonna be surprising to say. Mm. <laughs> and I don't wanna this out, but man, I think Dame Lillard got a, a good chance of just going over there and just really being an MVP candidate. Okay, like, you so got, I, I think you got Dame my early Dollar pick, in the new spot. Okay, I think Dame Lillard is going to show them folks I mean, that I'm with it. I'm going with the number one jersey in Phoenix, champ. Book. I think Devin yeah, Booker. Booker. He got mm. deep book. Okay, because the reason why I say that because they could be the top team in the West, mm-hmm. and if right not, at the top of the league, and at the top of the league, and that team is somewhat built around him, mm-hmm. and he's going to get his numbers. Oh yeah. So he have a chance to be the league MVP if that if that continues. I'm going with Jason Tatum. Mm. Mm. Go. He he was like I felt like if it was the first half of a season MVP, he would have had that last year. He definitely would have. We know how young fella trying to he he trying to pull up. He trying to get to it. He's trying to prove himself. I think Tatum, you know, he got a solid team, just like you said with Book. He gonna his team gonna be somewhere around the top of the league, top mm-hmm. of the East, and, and wins and record and all of that. We know that plays a big part, but I think I think he gonna he gonna show another phase to his game, and he gonna he gonna take another step this year. Yeah, defense player, defensive player of the year. I, I got AD. I think Man, if AD so. played them eighty two games or them seventy some games, like he said. I got AD up there as maybe a defense player, yeah. Mm. I feel like he's the defender on their team. He's the one. I'm gonna that say kinda... Bam or Drew Holiday. I was gonna say Drew mm. also because mm. I, I think go again with, with Boston they're gonna be good. They're gonna be on TV. Yeah, he's you it's know only two point guards to ever. I, that's what I'm player. saying. I think Bam or, or Drew, but I think I'm almost leaning toward Drew a little more because I think they're gonna be better as a team. They'll have a better record and all that, and that kind of matters when you get down to that stuff. No mm-hmm. doubt. Rookie of the year. This is a good one. We got Vic Wimbanyama. We got, got Scott Henderson, Miller. and don't sleep Chet Holmgren. Although technically in his second year, will be considered a rookie. So you know. Mm-hmm. Then you still got Brandon Miller. You still got uh, Anthony Black. You still got a lot of different guys. Mm-hmm. That could, that could, we know how it go. Pop up and just be hooping. Right. Go my young fella from, from Alabama, man. Brandon Miller. I think he gonna be. I okay. think he's gonna be special. What are you about six nine? Any? 
Yeah, he about six eight, six nine. Six eight, six nine. Shooting that yeah, thing, smooth. Yeah. So you got B Miller, okay? Shout out B Miller, our young yeah. fella. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not mad with that. Victor may be my choice. Mm, that's a great choice. Wimby, they if he, if he, he, him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you got to get a little stronger mm -hmm. to maintain that 82 game schedule. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go with Chet. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with Chet, man. I feel like he got a kind of like a. He got a little cheat sheet. Cheat sheet. He had to, you know, <laughs> yeah. even though he was hurt all last year, he got to live that NBA life right. and see some of kind of what goes into it and see how other guys prepare and be in, be traveling and see what, you know, long trips and different things work uh, look like. So I think, and not only that, I mean, the more he, he cold. <laughs> you know what Very I'm nice. saying? He one of them, like, and I think, you know, he, it's going to be exciting to see him get added to that young OKC team and see what he could bring. And I think he's gonna be right there in the mix with, with with getting that award. I think you know it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a tight one. Coach of the year. Coach of the year, huh? I'm gonna go with uh, Adrian Griffin. I'm gonna Adrian go with Adrian Griffin. Griffin huh? that's a, that's okay. A First year coach. Now, was that predicated upon the best record in the league or kind of? Kind of. Really, but they you... be the top one or two in their conference in the league. So, yeah, I say the coach. Yeah, him. I feel like they're gonna have a good season. His first year coaching. Coach of the year, huh? <laughs> yeah. First name came to mind was Tim Thibodeau, but I, you know. Tim, I'm, hey, you know, I was just finna say that. I, I was Thibodeau about to say Tom Thibodeau. If the Knicks, if the Knicks tighten up, right? If they, yeah. if, if they, if they take one more step, which I think Julius Randle been in the gym like crazy this summer. Yeah. So his approach to the game is gonna be grade A. Yeah. Jalen Brunson had a great run with the FIBA World Games. Yeah. So. I think they may come back with some really, really, really nice good chemistry and Timmy yeah. gonna get them boys on the right track. That would be my pick. I'm gonna go opposite of like the best team in the league type record. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go Ime Udoka. Hey, that's like cool. he, he turned them young boys around and get Houston because they got a lot of talent, a lot they of do. pieces yeah. down they there. Do. And they don't like, I feel like he's in a scenario where they don't have to have the best record in the league, but right. like if he get them looking the right way and trending the right way and you know, they, they up their wins and get close yeah. and something like that and they playing the right type of ball, I think he could he could he could sneak be a sneaky pick. He's a really yeah, good coach. I, I like I like Yeah, him. we know he may know what he's doing. That's yeah. why I say yeah, I, he I like him and I'm 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 excited for Chauncey and what he gathered. Oh big shot, yeah, 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 yeah. The, you know, young school. He got the Anthony Simmons, he just got mm -hmm. Aiden, he got Robert Williams. Right. Like, you got a I'm, whole young core. Yeah, I'm ex I'm excited to see what he do down there and, and, and how he do it. T. Lou got his hands full with the Clippers. Yeah. Yes, he does. It's you just, the, it's, I think the health bug is, is just on. They just got to right. be healthy to compete. They have all the tools. If right. y'all had to pick a team to say, like, going to be a surprise team, nobody ain't really talking about or thinking about, who y'all think? OKC. I think OKC is going to be the – Surprise team, Shay Gilchrist is crazy. Thirty a game, they get sh they get checked back. They got Giddy, mm -hmm. like they they deep as a young squad that actually can play and 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 got some years in it. So I'm I'm excited to see them next year. That's gonna be a sleeper. Mm -hmm. They made the they made the play in, almost made the playoffs in the AC, and yeah, I think mm -hmm. they're gonna make some. They're gonna be a surprise team next year. Call me a homer. I'm excited about the magic, bro. Hey, like, okay. For real, like, they, they, they trending, okay. they building, like, they got some young pieces. Is Jonathan Isaac back? Yeah, yeah he back Isaac healthy, back, back playing. Okay. And, I, and, like, I think Jamal Mosley is, is, like, the perfect coach for these young kids, this, this new generation. They respond to him. He know how to motivate them. He know how to deal with them. And uh, I think he's doing an excellent job, man. I think, you know, uh, Jeff and John and those guys in the front front office did a great job the last two to three years, like adding good pieces and you know what I'm saying, making moves to 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 complement what they got. And I think they got a, you know what I'm saying, they got a, a, a whole youth movement over there, boy. And I'm telling you, Paolo and Franz, them two boys is big time, bro. I'm telling you, they big time. Yeah, that's fine. And like you got a lot of good pieces around there. They got a lot of exchangeable, like two way players, like. They just got a lot. Like, you know how it is to be good in the league. You got to have almost like two star lineups. And, like, even though they young and they all kind of similar, like, they the can. Point. Cole yeah. could start on teams in the league. Yeah. Yeah. Suggs could start on teams in the league. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Martell, my, Folk. yeah, Folks yeah. is a starter on that team and can be. And then, you know, you still bring a young Anthony Black. You got Jet Howe. You got, 
we got some young pieces, man. I, I, I just, I'm excited for them. I hope everybody can stay healthy and, you know, they keep doing what they doing. I think they could be a surprise team. I'm not saying like, hey, they about to shake up the league, but I'm talking about just like, good team to watch. Good team, this, yeah. this, 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 this uh, trending the right way. I think a surprise team would be the Rockets. Them, yeah. I think, I, th- I think, I think, cause you brought up Eme and I started thinking about the team. And I do think with the leadership of Eme and the young core guys they have, I feel like they could be a sleeper. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They got to prove themselves, but it, they could be a sleeper. Win more games than people think they will. Right, exactly. Who's your early finals prediction? Finals prediction? Yeah, who you who have? Coming out the West. Yeah. Phoenix. We're going with the Valley of the Sun. We're going to go with Phoenix. Okay. I think Phoenix coming out the West. East. We got Milwaukee. Mm. Cause I think Giannis is a different kind of guy, man. Yeah. He kind of got a little bit of a stat kind of mental hey, where he's just hey, trying to attack he, that he basket. He definitely remind me of how he's you know <laughs> he really you coming down. Stat. He definitely you know remind me of young yeah. stat. What Gers told me, Gers told me that back when um, I was still playing in Phoenix at the time. I think Giannis was like 19 or 20. Yeah. You know, Tim Gergerich was with us in Phoenix. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, stat, I want you to meet somebody. And he brought Giannis over. He's like, this kid remind me of you. Mm-hmm. And I was I was 23, 24 at the time, maybe a little bit older, 25. Yeah. And Giannis was like 19, 20. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then, sure enough. He, he, <laughs> he out there doing the thing. Whole they be moving out the way for him because yeah, they know he yeah, come. Yeah. I, uh, I'm going to follow that cab, man. I agree with you. I'm going a, I'm to a roll with Phoenix and, yeah. and Milwaukee. My, yeah. my early finals predictions. It's hard for me to go against that. I, I got to just, <laughs> like, cause I, I want to say the Celtics a little bit, but I'm unsure until I see enough from them with the with the bigs and stuff. Because when you look at Brooke and Giannis versus, you know, Chris Stapps and whatever, whoever else, I don't know if it'll be Horford or whatever, but I, I got a little more faith in Milwaukee. So I'm, I'm yeah. going to have to go to Milwaukee and, um, yeah, the West, I – until something change, I don't see nobody knocking the Suns off. It yeah, should be like, you know, it should be their time to, to come on out of there. Yeah. But speaking of the Suns, like, I want to go back to Young Stack. Hmm. Tell me about the dunk on Oliver Candy in Staples Center in LA. I was in the game, I was on the Clippers at the time. Mm-hmm. Right. But like, that was one of like, I know that's one of the clips, the highlights. I see it enough to know that you see it probably way they more probably than that. Is that like day one of the you. most replayed <laughs> dunks of, of your career that you see? Yeah, it's definitely one of them for sure. Like, tell me how, like, like after that dunk and that day and that, when it went, like, how was that for you when it went viral? It was crazy because, you know, the Stephon face made, Steph made, face. It, made it even nasty. <laughs> face was a meme. He was like, yeah, it was just nasty. Because when I when I caught the ball in the roll, I wanted to I wanted to dunk the ball so hard. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanted the whole stadium to hear the dunk. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then Odell with Camby, he jumped. So when he jumped, I'm like, this make it even more of a powerful dunk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So so I was already had my aggressive attack in mind as soon as I caught the ball. Mm-hmm. And then when he jumped, it just made it, it just made it just that much more of an epic finish because the sound that that everyone heard is the reason why Steph kind of made that face. You 6'10, he's seven feet seven one. You went up, you got that bitch in one hand, and then he like hit your arm. Right. And it was like a, a, a exaggerated cock back. And then who? Right. It was like, God damn. And it was like, you know how like sometimes. He's the visiting player. So it's not <laughs> like the crowd was about to be like, huh? But it still was a like, oh, oh. Right. It was a ooh, a hole for the whole crowd. And then it was like buzzing. Like shit, like ooh. And, and you know, it was the end one. So now he walking around and he hooked. And I'm looking up, like, I'm, like, I'm like, oh shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then you seeing like, it's still like a 30 second delay of the fans in the crowd. Like, oh. Ooh, yeah, it's right. still you still hearing like deep breaths and gasps, and it was like, bro, it was like, god damn. And that was my rookie year. Yeah, rookie yeah. stat. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then when the ball, if you look at the replay, you see how the ball go through the net on a straight, direct line to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Hard so, so you know, so you, <laughs> so you know the force that was behind that was yeah. crazy. And that's why I said, I said, like he said, you could hear the dunk and you could hear him. Boom! I said, oh shit, it was like <laughs> it was a whole lot at once. 
I want you to tell us the memory, your favorite memory of, of being a son. What was your favorite memory of being a Phoenix son? My favorite memory, um, there's a lot of them, right? There's a lot of plays that come to mind throughout my time in Phoenix. And it's always hard to just pick like one. one. Yeah. It's, it's like an accumulation of all these things that happen, mm-hmm. right? And being a young high school player, going straight to the league and trying to figure out the NBA, how this works, you still try to be the best you can be. Mm-hmm. But, but I think like being the rookie of the year out of high school was probably one of my favorite moments yeah. because that hasn't happened before. Mm-hmm. And they didn't expect it. And it was, it, yeah, exactly. And it was a tight, it was kind of a tight race because y'all mean was like the next generation big. Yeah. And we're in the same class. And I'm like, right. this, this high school kid, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, that would have to be probably one of my favorite moments or the one year we was in the All-Star, All-Star weekend. Oh, when we ran Denver, the table. When the whole team was there. Yeah, the whole, the team, whole five, yeah. that was that was classic. Yeah. Three-point shooting. Shout out to Steve for making that happen. Remember they tried to play me. Remember yeah. they won me in a three-point contest? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, I remember that. Steve said, no skills challenge for me if Q ain't there. Right, right. And then I was in the dunk contest. Steve was in the skills challenge. That was like a, a moment of, of my career that was that was exciting because we all was like cherishing the moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was a good time. Well, that's a wrap, man. We did a special edition tap in. We got our homeboy, Big Stat, Big Stat. AKA <laughs> going into the Ring of Honor stat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's legacy fame, stuff Nick, right there for my main man. <laughs> it's been a tap in, man. Season coming up, WNBA season coming to the end. It's good times, man. We're going to be tapping in with you all year long. Let's go, Tune baby. in. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs>